Dilly in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up to sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Right, so April the 24th, Andrews Jr. versus Chris Ariola on Fox pay-per-view now this fight has been spoken about since even before lockdown before the whole global pandemic or anything so this is a fight that was always going to happen but now april the 24th on fox pay-per-view this seems to be exactly what's going on now why would they put this on pay-per-view for me i think it's for it's one of two reasons number one because i think andy andy Ruiz jr he wants a lot of money he's just come off two huge paydays with anthony joshua what he's not going to want to do is go fight somebody for 100 grand, 200 grand even. He's going to want a fair bit of change. So PBC, Fox got together and said, okay, Andy, if you think that you're worth X amount of money, okay, it's fine. We don't mind paying you, but you're going to have to prove to us that you are marketable. Because obviously the last fight, you lost every second of every round against Anthony Joshua. Yes, you did beat Anthony Joshua. And his profile was very, very high. But how much did that rematch take out of the profile of Andy Ruiz Jr.? So by putting it on pay-per-view, it's a pretty much a no-risk for Fox, isn't it? Because you get paid whatever you sell. If you get X amount of pay-per-views, then you're going to get X amount of money. If you don't, then that's the money you're going to get. Okay, so for me, that I think that's probably why they put it on pay-per-view. Maybe Andrews Jr., he asked for X amount of guarantee. Fox went, no, 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 because we don't know how good your markability is right now. We, we generally don't know. So this is a good way for you to show us, yes, you are a pay-per-view fighter. You are a huge name in the sport that people want to see. And more importantly, people are willing to pay, right? So that's one reason. The other one is that they're both Mexican-Americans. How often do you see Mexican-Americans fight each other? How long, how often do you see two Mexicans fighting each other? Especially at heavyweight. In fact, I can't even recall another fight before this, to be honest with you, between two Mexican-Americans or even two Mexicans at heavyweight. I can't really recall it. I'm sure it has happened. I just can't think of it um, off the top of my head. So maybe that's going to have that attraction. It's going to draw in the Mexican audience. Mexicans love boxing. They support all their own. And they do see Andres Jr. and Chris Ariola as one of their own. So I think that's probably the two reasons why it's on pay-per-view. Would it be pay-per-view here in the UK? Absolutely not. Of course not. In fact, I think it would be very difficult to sell Anthony Joshua or a Tyson Fury or Dillian White against a Chris Ariola and put it on pay-per-view. It will be very, very difficult to do it here in the UK. But the UK market is totally different to the American market. Okay. But I do feel and I do wonder if this is also on pay-per-view because something else is happening on that card. This may not be the headliner. It may not be the headliner. This could be the chief support for a Deontay Wilder versus, I don't know, Charles Martin, for example. Or this could be the headliner with... Deontay Wilder versus Charles Martin as a chief support. Maybe you put them both together, maybe it's a pay-per-view, okay? Maybe. Again, we'll have to wait and find out exactly what the undercard is. Maybe this is part of the undercard. We don't know right now. So, again, going forward, it's going to have to have a very, very good undercard, something that the PBC don't usually do. I know they did it with the Charlos fights last time out. Excellent undercard in that, of course. So, yeah, they have done it, but often they don't. They put all their eggs in one basket on the main event, and that's what sells. Anything else is just filler. Whereas here in the UK, we like to see a good headliner and a good undercard. We will criticise if the undercard's not very good. In America, it's broadly accepted, an undercard, it is what it is. Okay, because people tune in for the main event. That seems to be the mentality of that, and that's absolutely fine. But when you look at both their records as to who's going to win this one, well, of course, you're going to have to heavily, heavily favour Andy Ruiz Jr. Now, both of these guys, they have fought in world title fights three times each. Andy Ruiz Jr., Joseph Parker, and then two fights with Anthony Joshua, with Chris Ariola, Vitaly Klitschko, Bermain Verne rematch, and then with Deontay Wilder. Now, I do feel that Chris Ariola, it's got nothing to do with his age, by the way, but it's his conditioning. His conditioning has let him down for the longest time. And if you're getting knocked out by Bermain Stavern, if you're getting beaten from pillar to post by a career cruiserweight in 
Thomas Adamek and others, you've got problems. You really do. Quite why he was in a world title fight in a rematch with Bermain Stavern is beyond me. For me, that's all, that was always down to politics. It really was. But Chris Ariola, he will turn up and he, will, and he will give it his best. But unfortunately, he's not good enough. He's, don't get me wrong, he's a heavyweight. Heavyweights can punch. If he lands clean on Andrews Jr., there's a good chance Andrews Jr. could go down and not get up again. That's just the beauty of heavyweight boxing. But outside of that, you wouldn't give Chris Ariola any kind of chance because we know how to beat Andy Ruiz Jr. Well, you go on the back foot. Josie Parker beat Andy Ruiz Jr. by fighting on the back foot. Anthony Joshua beat Andy Ruiz Jr. by fighting on the back foot. Chris Ariola, not really known for that. Chris Ariola, not a great back foot fighter. He's not somebody who stays behind the jab. And the size difference between them isn't that great. Chris Ariola's foot speed isn't that great. Andy Ruiz Jr., his foot speed isn't that great, but his hand speed is lightning fast. But of course, with Andy Ruiz Jr., now he's, he's trained under the guidance of Eddie Reynoso. Of course, he trains Ryan Garcia, Sal Canela Alvarez, uh, Frank Sanchez, and a whole plethora of other top, top quality fighters. Okay, so Andy Ruiz Jr. is going to have some extra elements to his game when we see him fight. This is a fight where... Andy Ruiz Jr. is designed for him to win. To move on to a Deontay Wilder fight. Now for me, and I think for most people as well, with all the excuses that Deontay Wilder's made ever since he lost to Tyson Fury in the one-sided beatdown, it does appear that Andy Ruiz Jr., his name is now above Deontay Wilder, where he is the face of American heavyweight boxing. Certainly for Mexican heavyweight boxing, but with American or just stateside in general. All the countries that side of the world, America, Mexico, Canada, South America, Andy Ruiz Jr. does seem to be the face of the heavyweight boxing in that area of the world. So this is designed for him to A, fight another Mexican-American, but also to get a win to move into a Deontay Wilder fight. Because after this fight... People are going to expect, people are going to say, okay, now you fought Chris Ariola, you've had your comeback fight, let's see what you got now. Let's see you take on, if you're going to be staying um, in-house inside the PBC, let's see you take on Deontay Wilder. Let's see you take on a Adam Kaunaki. Again, both short, kind of out of shape, both fast hands, that'd be a very interesting fight. Let's see that fight. Let's see him take on Luis Ortiz. Okay, these are the kind of guys we want to see Andrews Jr. in with. Okay, so hopefully going forward, that's what that's exactly what it is. I know some people might say, yeah, but this is just a comeback fight. It can be forgiven. Well, this fight was talked about way before lockdown. So this fight was always going to happen. And had lock, lockdown not hit across the globe, then this fight would have happened already. Okay, so no, it's not about that. And yes, of course, Andrews Jr., we know that the whole excuse as to why he lost to Anthony Joshua in the rematch is because he didn't really train uh, properly, yada, yada, yada. No, the style that Anthony Joshua fought would have beaten a in shape, a fit Andy Ruiz Jr. Because all you got to do is use your height and reach advantage. That's how you beat him. Because Andy Ruiz Jr. can't get close to you otherwise. Okay, so going forward, can Chris Ariola do that? I don't think so. Can Deontay Wilder do that to Andy Ruiz Jr.? Well, he's got the size to do it. He's got the reach to do it, but he's not a very good boxer. At some point, at some point, Andrew, Andrew Ruiz Jr., in my opinion, will close the gap, land on Wilder. We know Wilder isn't very good around the whiskers and Wilder will go. But Wilder, of course, he can stop anybody. We know he can. Um, a Charles Martin. Charles Martin could pos possibly cause Andrew Ruiz Jr. problems because he's tall. Of course, he's southpaw as well but he's got that reach and he's got that boxing ability. So maybe he could, if you look at all the stateside heavyweights, he could be the one that could actually beat Andy Ruiz Jr. by using that game plan. Because I think anybody who gets on the inside and starts trading with Andy Ruiz Jr., while of course they could win, it's, uh, um, you know, it is heavyweight, Andy Ruiz Jr. should always come out on top because of the faster hands. And of course he is very heavy handed. I mean, he may struggle a little bit with Adam Kalnacki, but of course he is a Polish guy. So when I'm talking about American-based, um, Adam Kalnacki kind of not really. But anyway, April 24th, Fox pay-per-view. It won't be pay-per-view um, pay here in the UK. Hopefully we get to see it. 
I'd like to see it just to see Andy Ruiz Jr.'s comeback fight, to be honest with you. But if not, there'll be some kind of way that uh, we can watch it here in the UK. Anyway, drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.